All right. Hope you all can hear me good at home. All right, thank you for joining. My screen is catching up, so if there are any issues, please use the chat and let us know that what it is there for is to chat with us. Um, and then this is a family rated program, so it is PG. No profanity or inappropriate behavior will be tolerated. Um, and my name is Gabby Zarnecki. I am the Southern Region Angler Education Coordinator for Nevada Department of Wildlife. And our awesome moderator tonight is Nicole Hamlin, and she's our conservation aide for conservation education. So thank you for joining us tonight. We are going to go over what is legal to cast wider net. Uh, there's not a lot of casting opportunities in um, Nevada period in most inland states, uh, but we have such a large body of water and a bunch of red and bad out at Lake Mead, so we're going to go over that. Uh, please use the Q&A box as well if uh, you have any questions. All right. All right, so what we're gonna do tonight is we're gonna go over what you need to know before you get going anywhere, what the bait fish that we're looking for are and where they're hiding. And then we're going to go over some of the material and uh, some of the um, ways to do it. <laughs> and then we'll wrap it all up with questions and answers and anything else that I may have missed. So make sure you have a light. Even though you're going for bait fish, which is an unprotected species, because there are sport fish in the waters, you still have to have your state license. So for Nevada, it's Nevada water, uh, Nevada fishing license for Nevada waters. Um, and if you're on the river, uh, you can fish at Willow Beach with your Nevada license and same with Tahoe. Uh, so in licensing.com, you can get your license there. And make sure you have a checkbook. That way you don't forget any of these tools that you need to cast the net. Uh, you do need a fishing license if you're 12 and older. And 12 to 17 has a junior license. It's only $15 for a whole year. Uh, know what is legal. So urban ponds are going free fish. You have to use your rod and reel. And then um, there you can catch the threads and sad on the Colorado River, mainly like weed. Um, and so that is opportunity there and you can use life safe um, And then just make sure that what you're catching is a fresh and shad and not just a fingerling or a small fry uh, fish. So bass, um, striped bass, they all kind of work similar. So on the next slide is Knowing your water. So in our regulations, um, Nicole will share that link with you. In the regulations right in the middle is this map, and that's why there's that line in there, because ours falls right in the middle. And then we also have created an app, which is pretty awesome. And on that app is uh, you can type in the water that you're wanting to fish and search up all the species that are in that water. So it's pretty neat that way as well. Here is that link. So it's called an app because it's an application, but it is uh, technically a, a, a website. All right, so straight out of our regulations, what you need to know about bait fish. So basically, the aquatic species is live and unprotected. So you can use. Um, anything from that water that isn't protected, but you do need to double check on that. So that's why night colors are allowed for red worms or uh, earthworms or mealworms. 
And then also um, salmon eggs are okay. Uh, crawfish, especially if they're from that water, but you can't transport anything alive. So if you do bring a uh, state fish, I do recommend having that receipt with you or on your phone or anywhere. Okay. And our specific part for us. Um, so you can use um, mosquito fish. So those will actually look a lot like shark and fat, little itty bitty silver fish. Um, and then you can also use golden shiners. Um, and there are some local anglers that are selling those lights as well. And so yeah, here's the specifics on this. It's around page 33. And it does have the NAC. So you can directly go to the Nevada um, mission laws and see all those regulations spelled out and extra that we can put on. So if um, there is a specific question about that that you're wondering, please let me know. So this is the guy we're looking for. And you can kind of see his eyes a little up higher on his face. So um, that's what you're looking for when you're looking for that tool to cast your bait net into. Oh, and one, I'm sorry, on the last thing too, I forgot, uh, it was kind of hard to see on my end as far as highlighted is the and to the practice session lock key, lock key. Um, so underneath it says that the net that you're using, the radius, which is, here's the horn to the end. This can only be four feet. So this is a legal net, this is four feet. I'm only like five foot tall. Um, so, four foot radius, and this is how they sell them. So it's nice and easy to find. This is a legal net. And this is honestly the one I would recommend so you don't have any issues. Um, this one is newer. Uh, we got it just to do these programs and hopefully we'll be able to do these actually live and families can test it out. Um, so it is pretty stiff still. Um, if there is a cloth option, that might be even better, but we'll go over that in just a second. So four feet, make sure that the one you buy is only four feet. Because if not, it won't be legal and it will be taken. All right, so they can be in shallows. I know there's been a lot of nights who've been night fishing and sunrise in the morning, you can actually find them right along the edge cooling right along the edge. And the really cool thing to find them is they're silver with a black dot. So the difference between them and a bluegill is going to be really close. Bluegills are going to have little stripes on them. And these guys are going to be solid with that dark spot. So make sure you're checking that, but there's no lines whatsoever on these guys. All right. And I was, um, it, Oh, it just came out here. <laughs> um, so this uh, video, just for the first couple seconds, is um, our friend Brandon, uh, Brent's Fishing Life on YouTube. And um, he took his daughter fishing a few months ago, maybe even last fall before it got cold. And they were able to catch some shreds from Chad and Ethan as they get some stripers out, uh, right out of the way, actually. Mm, yeah, just a taste of the video. There's a few more minutes on that, so I definitely recommend checking that one out. And if you haven't gone down to Mojave and had any of the monster site bass down there, you can see some of these videos that go down to it. He's done webinars with us on site staff before. All right, so we went out to the park. So this 
it's just toes. And I honestly recommend if you can find a grassy field, if you have a grassy backyard, that would definitely be better than this. And you'll see here in a minute um, on a hard surface, it's going to bounce. But if you have a grassy field or even dirt, that will give um, it a little bit better for texting your bait testing to try to see how it stands out. Um, so just make sure your materials are all you need. Um, I do like the tarp either way, that way you don't get grass um, or any um, vegetation in your net. Uh, and then these um, playground chip balls, they're about two inches, I think is how old I bought them. Um, and there's a huge amount. And then I use the bucket as like the bait um, catcher. So it's really fun. Um, for a windy day, I'm using flat bracelets that we have as giveaways, and that's going to work out okay. And then um, you just need your net. So you just need something to catch, and it can even be plastic bottles, honestly. Crunched up plastic bottles will work really good if you have those around for your recycling. So go through recycling, and you can even use that. Um, so Oh, this is one of the screenshots from the videos that I worked on. And we'll make a two minute video of this too that we'll have uploaded for you. So I think we will pause here and I'll do a couple castings and make sure you're asking questions. All right, so this one has the bracelet. Um, if you're on a boat, I do recommend um, not using that actually, unless you can get it on and off really easy. But the disadvantage this is um, in case of emergency, say you're um, casting off the back because your boat turns as you're throwing your net out. And now you have to worry about the motor. If it gets caught in the motor and it pulls your hand in there, it can pull you in. Um, and so either have a safety knife, which is always good to have on your life jacket when you're fishing or anything, um, or just take this and do like a slip knot and just kind of do it like that to where it'll come off. Um, and then, yeah, check the chat for all the uh, links. All right, so what we're going to do, so I have that on the slip knot, or just a basic knot, and then that way that's just hanging down, and that's going to be back here, so it's out of the way. And then we're just going to do about two foot circles, and always loading forward. It doesn't have to be exact but we want to make sure we don't have any knots so that when we throw it out, it comes out perfect and nice and straight because that's going to be your length. So as I pull it off, just make sure I don't have any knots. And <laughs> we'll just get one in there. But we're going to make it really small because I have plenty of length on this one. So that way it's out of the way. And we'll take that out after. All right, so then the way that this one works out for me and it worked out pretty perfect. As I pick up the horn, and in the same direction I was making the circle, I kind of grab a little bit lower. There's actually a line on here, and that's perfect because you want the length around your ankle. So then I just grab right here. This is like down here at the hip. Circle it up, facing out and away from me. And then I take, because this is a short one, uh, we're not doing um, anything crazy where you have to like grab it in the middle and circle around because as we um, pull this out, you don't have to throw this over your shoulder. You don't have to put it in your mouth. You definitely don't want to do that anymore, right? Take half, leave half. So it's kind of like where you're at in the middle, you can double check. And as you do that, you can even check, shake it out, make sure that you don't have any bad loops that would keep it from opening up. Take this half that you just bent, circle it again. And I always go to me and out. And then that way it's all in the same direction. We have all this there. And then down here at the bottom where it loops up, pull that out. You can kind of see that it, the closest part to you is, um, is longer. So that way the shorter part is out. And then we're going to circle and toss. So I like to do it sideways 
And just like when we're fishing, we are looking at where we're throwing, and we're even going to put our arm out there like that. So I'm going to turn into it and go across my body and let go of everything in my right hand as I'm tossing out to the left. So I'm going to lead with my left and then follow with my right. And here we go. We're going to open it up. And I overshot, but I think I still got one bait fish in there. And you can see how on the hard surface it bounces. So I got one for a different shot so I can get my line um, at least cut up, making sure that the horn is pushed down, picking up with the string. And hopefully that is in the boat and not back in the water. <laughs> All right, so we got them in the boat. All right, so do we have any questions yet? No questions. I just shared the guide, the map, and the YouTube video in the chat. Awesome. All right, so I'm going to do one more. Start over, get rid of that knot while you think of any questions. We will have this uploaded on YouTube in a couple weeks. If I went too fast or if you thought of something else. All right. I even like to just double it up sometimes too, and then put start that in my hand. Here comes the next wave of weather for tonight. I thought I was gonna get rained on, but it looks like it kind of turned. So it's going right up the river for us. It's in the valley, but uh, I don't know if anybody's on um, the fishing group pages but it was definitely windy again this morning. All right, so remember holding that horn, pulling down, looking away, grabbing half again, and looping that over our hand and away. You can see that circles up. And then down where it turns and curls, I like to pull that up like that. And we're going to lead. A lot of my bait just took off, but I'm going to lead with my left and follow with my right. And I like to pull it up too, especially this one. Um, I seem to get it bunched better if I pull it up higher. And that way my bait fish up on the boat and then into the bucket. Kind of show you and ended up undoing it. All right, so we'll continue and then that'll talk to you. Okay. All right, so we're there are any questions about specifics? So be an ethical angler, fish responsibly. Um, if you're fishing and there's somebody, um, if you're on the boat, they have to, um, if there's somebody right there, don't fish on top of them. Um, and that also goes with um, respecting others. Fishing responsibly is also making sure you know what you're trying to catch and that you're not actually catching a sport fish. Um, if uh, let them go and grow, so stay. I have a small hungry striper goes after that big fish and it's only like 12 inches. Let it go and grow. Uh, select the harvest. You're going to be better off trying again. Um, sometimes you can even use the same fish and um, getting a little bit bigger fish. And that way you're not seeing a little bit of the same fish. And next year you can get that uh, same small fish and it's a lot bigger and has have the potential to spawn. Um, preserve your passion. So that just means please share this with friends, family, and uh, young parties. 
next generation and get them outside and protecting our our uh, our land and where we want to sit. Keep spreading word. As a Disney tree of a <laughs> if you can kind of see, please, I can show you guys right past me. Up high there is the storm going up the river. So anyone out on the river on Lake Mojave or Lake Mead is going to be miserable. <laughs> it is, it's coming down hard. So hopefully there, everyone came in all right this other day. Um, check the fishing report. Try to put that stuff in the fishing report if it's going to be a really bad weekend to warn people. This next weekend actually is pretty amazing. Um, it's going to be like 90 degrees. So the fish are probably going to start moving a little bit um, and sunny. So they're going to be a little bit deeper. But make sure you have your fishing license, check the fishing report, pack it in, pack it out, bring an extra garbage bag, get a little bit of extra garbage out of the way. Um, check, yeah, <laughs> check the water levels too. Um, you can check to see if the water's gone down at all. Um, and that's also going to affect the shore um, condition and know your water to know the areas that you're planning on setting out to and what is potential, um, what your your legal level is. Any more questions? I'll go on to the last one. My email address and phone number is on our last slide. Thank you for attending tonight. Thank you for helping the poll. We do have a survey. Um, on that survey, let us know how you did, what you thought of the presentation, and what you'd like to see next time. Uh, by attending tonight, you are supporting us, so thank you. And um, if you do go out, uh, you and you are an ethical angler, hashtag responsible recreation, and sure, and uh, hashtag endow. So we'll hang out just another minute. If you guys have any more questions, let us know. But thank you for coming. Thank you for your help tonight. Thank you. While we're waiting, I'll do one more talk. Abby, I'm going to go ahead and put your contact information in the chat and make you full screen for that last cast. All right, thank you. I have my line bunched up. I have my horn over. I'm going to take my second half and move that over and out, or just facing away and on top of each other. Make sure you can see. Oh, I untangled it. There was one kind of tangled in with the line that holds it down and kind of holds it to get right in the sock. I uh, gotta make sure that that's straightened out. All right, here we go. Now be a nice one to sink right into the water. But I kind of hopefully got a few on the way out. But definitely went into the bait fish out there. All right, thank you for coming. Have a good night.